I'm Dayton Mayor Nan Whaley, obviously. Uh, look, we just um, have basically secured uh, the perimeters of downtown. It has been uh, this evening, I think the majority of the people that came to, to, to downtown to show their voices were peaceful, were thoughtful. Unfortunately, what we see in this, or we see some people that may not even be from our community coming to start to make some problems that really aren't even about the issue at hand. Uh, as uh, I, I am completely impressed with uh, local law enforcement led by Chief Beal and the Dayton Police Department. I think they did a terrific job making sure that we kept our community safe and protected um, our downtown and our whole community. So I'm really grateful for their work. Uh, and we recognize, we recognize that we have work to do on these issues that people are upset about. We're upset about them too. Uh, but we also know that making sure that uh, our community is, stays safe and the people of our community are safe is our top priority. And uh, once again, Dayton Police showed that, that that was their top priority as well, and I'm very grateful. We, Go ahead. We see a situation that may have happened at MJ's. Do we know? We're gonna, I'm going to let the chief talk a little bit just about like what uh, he knows exactly about the different arrests and everything, and um, you can ask him those questions. He's much better equipped to answer them than I am. Mm -hmm. So thank you. Yeah, you move up here. Did you do that in the mirror? You did great. Thanks. Okay, I'm Richard Beal, police chief of the city of Dayton. Uh, I will just say, quite frankly, this was a very challenging night for regional law enforcement that responded to. Um, mass protest and uh, following that in some cases uh, public disorder property damage assaults on police officers so it was a difficult and challenging night and the men and women of regional law enforcement did a fabulous job containing this disorder and doing any way that is appropriate and uh, compliant with law and policy and practice we have about 15 people we know have been arrested. Don't take that as the final count. This is an early count. 13 for misdemeanor, two for felony charges. About a one third of those are not from our city. Uh, we definitely have some property damage. We don't have that uh, accounted for yet. We've had some injuries of police officers. Most of the officers uh, maintained uh, their position and uh, crowd control. We did have a deputy from Montgomery County receive an ankle injury and was transported uh, for treatment. So that's kind of a real preliminary um, nutshell assessment of what happened this evening. Uh, if you have specific questions, I'll try to answer those. We heard that there was possibly shots fired. Can you speak to that? There were three calls of shots fired. None of those could be confirmed absolutely as being valid. We did investigate those. There was a particular incident at MJ's where it was reported an individual fired multiple shots uh, right outside the doorway and then went inside an establishment. Uh, tactical personnel from Dayton Police Department made an entry. They had to make a forced entry because the door was locked on them as they were approaching. They were able to go in and check that premise and uh, not locate anyone uh, that was a suspect for this report of shots fired. So we weren't able to confirm that. We heard that there was a signal 99. Can you speak to what may have caused that? Well, there were various times that there was a need for additional police presence at various areas. That's why a signal 99 is issued. I can tell you we worked very early on to uh, mobilize regional resources. So we uh, were prepared today. They have more than just Dayton police personnel present. We had a, uh, some sense that we would be challenged if you just looked what was happening around the country around the state, 50 miles south, 100 miles east, you got a pretty good idea what we could, we were potentially facing. And uh, I think it somewhat lived up uh, to those expectations. So we were prepared with sufficient personnel to include regional resources. Uh, my sincere thanks goes to all law enforcement, including the state patrol, but also regional law enforcement personnel that all responded in multiple capacities with multiple, performing multiple functions uh, in terms of traffic control, crowd control, et cetera, uh, did an extraordinary job showing the cohesiveness 
uh, and the competency of regional law enforcement. So uh, my sincere gratitude to them. And talking about those other cities and how bad it could have been, our businesses really fared pretty well. What do you have to say to the people of Dayton and what they did to make sure that we don't have all these looters and riots that other cities we're seeing across the nation? Well, I think I made that clear yesterday. This is an incredible community that has responded time and time again to um, incredible adversity and loss and then done so with grit, grace, uh, compassion and kindness. That is the overwhelming character of this community. Uh, generally speaking, the individuals who came initially began in this protest, a large amount of them were you know, basically orderly, law-abiding, and merely wanted to give their voice to an issue that they felt was critical for them to speak on. So from that standpoint, I think the community performed very well. Now, there were a group that split off later on uh, and that you know, varied in sizes over time engaged in a fair amount of public disorder and some extremely dangerous driving behavior, pedestrians in the street, people hanging off of cars, uh, you know, doing donuts in intersections, just insane from my view. So uh, that behavior was problematic. It was dangerous to the community. It was dangerous to law enforcement who were present and trying to contain it. And so action needed to be taken. I want to applaud the mayor for issuing a curfew was absolutely essential in this case and uh, I think is likely to be so in the future. We need to uh, ensure that we protect our public and that was an important mechanism in doing so. Any concern that we could maybe see something tomorrow? I know there's obviously going to be a lot of these kind of protests, but you know that it could come into tomorrow. Yeah, I, mean, I think there's no saying, uh, you know, how uh, long this kind of momentum will be sustained. Uh, there is absolutely a place for people to express their voice and express that voice in a very uh, profound way uh, without violating the law and without presenting risk to the community. Um, there's mechanisms to do that. There's ways to do that. This community has demonstrated that for years that I have been police chief and do so orderly and law abiding. Tonight was a bit of an exception to that in some, to some degree later in the evening. Uh, there was a breach of public safety and a breach of public order and it needed to be addressed uh, you know decisively by law enforcement and that was done now with with what happened to george floyd is, is that something that you guys discuss in your department when things that don't look good happen do you discuss how your officers will respond to a situation like that we actually discuss critical incidents from around the country on an ongoing basis uh, i will oftentimes send out video from other locations about incidents that occurred to remind our personnel of risks that can exist, of problems that exist in terms of a police response, community, re community interaction. So that's done on an ongoing basis. Uh, there was discussion very early on in this tragedy about its potential to have ripple effects and impact our community. We thought that was a really real possible, there was a real possibility of that and we basically prepared for that. Um, so yeah, these are ongoing discussions. This is not like an isolated case that we just um, spoke about this particular incident. We talked about incidents around the country. Uh, I even go back and talk about experience I had decades ago uh, that really is still relevant to this day. I'm drawing from that experience tonight, how to respond to this challenge here in our community with some of the, the public disorder that we experience. Um, you said that a large portion were from out of town. They weren't locals here. So what does that maybe? How does that? Well, well not a large portion. I a think a those portion. Arrested, about a third were not from the Dayton. District. Yeah, or a, a and portion. That's just really preliminary too, by the way, because we don't have a complete number of those arrested tonight. This is, I'm sure, we're still processing people. Okay. Um, what does that speak to though for our community, seeing that there are people coming from outside and? I would say that's fairly typical and. Um, high profile events, controversial events. Uh, I have been in law enforcement for over 40 years. <laughs> Got a little bit of experience about this and I can tell you that's been my experience in curly events in Cincinnati and other areas. Uh, it does draw outside influence. Um, too often uh, at times that is not in the best interest of the local community. They do not come here with the intention to be law abiding and to be orderly and to not uh, cause harm.